When I rode with Ibushesha first time, I never had that feeling that this guy is going to be the next world champion. Never. The first, the very first tournament that he came to compete in America, he won double gold. Nobody did what he did on the world championship. I think that will be his legacy. He is extremely talented and someone who has a heart of a lion. I think Jiu-Jitsu will remember Bushasha as one of the greatest heavyweights in Jiu-Jitsu history. His legacy as an athlete is it's amazing. You don't see guys that big move that well. And even as a kid, you can see there was something special about him. 14 world titles together. It's like it was on a point that he was donating absolute titles. I never seen something something like that. And Bushesh has consistently done that time and time again, you know, where he's gone to worlds and he's won his weight and the absolute. Weight and absolute. He's the same person in competition and on the mat training. It's more important to be a good person than it is to be a good jiu-jitsu player. It doesn't matter how much money you make or how much titles you get or who you become in the sport. Jiu-jitsu gave me the freedom to, to live where I want, to go where I, where I want to go. It's my joy, it's my love, it's my passion. If I can describe jiu-jitsu with a word, it would be freedom. Alfa Conte. Checha Monstro. E aí? Beleza? Beleza? Tranquilo. Oi, tudo bem? Beleza. E aí? Tudo bem? E aí? Beleza? E aí, velho? Fala, moleque. Beleza? E aí, palito? Seu merda, hoje tu vai bem só. Esse joelhinho aí, hoje eu vou machucar o palito. Here I call my house, you know, in Santos, that's where I feel like home, the house fight company. So we are like my brothers, we train together since. I was a little kid and here is like a tournament, you know. When you fight like an older brother, it's never like playing around. It's always for real. I really enjoy to be on the mat and even when I don't compete, I'm there supporting. It's always good to, to be around this energy and try to give a little bit of the energy to, to, my, to my friends and to my teammates. A lot of people just see the Bushisha on the mats, the one like with serious face. So I'm really proud to be the same person who I am since the old days. I'm just like a simple guy that came from a small city. I grew up in São Vicente, a city on the coast of São Paulo State in Brazil. My neighborhood wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst either. So when I was growing up, back in the day, we could spend the whole day in the streets playing. Ah, and it's always 
assim, desde criança, sempre foi muito calmo e... Assim, lembrança de momentos ruins, não. Assim, ele sempre foi um bom menino. Não, ele era uma criança normal. Andava de bicicleta, jogava bola. Tem os amigos deles que eram inseparáveis, né? Estavam indo sempre pra praia. Aqui a primeira prancha, né? Aí que começou, né? Start surfing, a lot of times to skip school, to go to the beach, you know, so we had this advantage living by the coast. E ele não chegava e eu, nossa, começava a ligar pros amigos, ah, e o Marcos já chegou, não. Não, oh, man, getting in trouble was one of the, the things that I was really good at. It. Porque ele ficava, ele era na dele, ou ele arrumava alguma confusão assim de molecada na rua, eu ia lá defender ele, eu era briguento, entendeu? Ele não. Eu lembro, like, como lutando nas ruas, era algo que eu fazia muito, mas eu era um dos jovens da minha rua, então eu fui morrido muito. Era sempre eu sempre eu por ele. Ele nunca foi briguento, eu que ia brigar na rua com os meninos, vocês bateram no meu irmão, que isso, que já queria bater em todo mundo, entendeu? My sister. She had to back me up, you know what I mean? Because she was uh, older, so it was funny to remember those days. I don't have my own bedroom, so my mother made like this part with a couple of my medals, but they are like all over the house. Old magazines, in the first one that when I was the world champion for the first time. Ele adorava fazer isso aqui, ó, subir no batente da porta. É, bem levadinho. Subia na porta, a mãe ficava desesperada. Você vai cair, você vai cair. <risos> Querendo virar jogador de futebol. Era o sonho dele. Ó. Queria ser jogador. E o sonho da minha mãe era que eu fosse modelo, me obrigava a fazer esse time forte. <risos> Você sabe, por exemplo, é, como Shirobei se inspirou para criar os movimentos do Jiu-Jitsu? Isso é fácil, pô. Das lutas dos semideuses é óbvio. Ah, é? É. Quando eu era around 12 years old, I didn't know much about Jiu-Jitsu. My sister, she was around 15. She was the one that made first contact with the sport. I don't know why. Tinha uma, uma tipo novela de adolescentes aqui no Brasil, né? Que era Malhação. E lá começou a abordar muito jiu-jitsu. E, e virou tipo uma febre, vai assim, tipo todo mundo, né? Falando de jiu-jitsu. <risos> Lance Batchelor was convinced that size and strength would determine the outcome of a fight of this kind, and that skill had little or nothing to do with it. So did size and strength prevail over the skill of jiu-jitsu? You be the judge. Quero treinar jiu-jitsu. Aí eu entrei numa academia aqui perto de casa, mas meu pai quis ir treinar comigo. E na época eu fiquei bem pé da vida, né? Porque eu tinha uns 14, 15 anos, então eu não queria o meu pai tipo atirar colo comigo em todos os lugares, né? My dad never liked the idea of of his daughter grappling with a bunch of guys. He started going there to go with her, but actually he was like watching her. E aí meu pai foi quando ele chamou o Marcos para ir junto. Vamos, filho, vamos, pai. Ele não queria muito, mas foi. I was going more just like because he was pushing me, but wasn't something that I thought about doing serious. I don't know why, but my father loved the idea that I was training. If I ask him like, "Oh, dad, can I have like a McDonald's or something?" No way. But if I go into jiu-jitsu and ask, he would buy it. But he never did before. It was like a easy way to get like a chocolate bar. So it was something that was taking advantage for like uh, for a while. Ele tinha o que 13 anos por aí. E 
E foi assim. O início nosso foi esse. When I was a white belt, I was like a short and chubby kid. I never thought I would succeed in the sport. In high school, a lot of times I talk to my friend Rafael. He say, if you have to fight, what are you gonna do? You're gonna strike the guy. What would you, would you do? Of course, I'm gonna try to take the guy down and control the guy and use my jiu-jitsu. One time, the guys, my friends, they set up a super fight in the middle of the school. The one kid that was way bigger than me, a little bit older too, and he was doing jiu-jitsu too. But he was all the, the time going to like jiu-jitsu championships. One time, the guy like talked some crap, so we argued, but we never fought, so it was like bad blood between us. The guys found mats. They put there between the, the classes. Yeah, it was in the middle of the school. It was like crazy. But I said, yeah, the guy said, yeah, I'll fight. I said, okay, let's do it. And the whole school watched it. it was like, because they thought it would like be like a scrap or an MMA or something. But it was grappling. I pulled guard, then I somehow ended up on his back. Then I real naked choke. Then he tapped. Then everybody like, bring me and everything. It was exactly like a bull. That was when I really saw the difference of getting beat up and get respected as like, it was in high school for sure. So where are we? Just, uh, here is the Estrela de Ouro. One of the, I think was the first place that one of the first places that have jiu-jitsu here. Now we're gonna meet Elcio Figueiredo. He's the oldest guy, the guy that brings jiu-jitsu to Santos, and he's the head coach of the Integração Jiu-Jitsu. I always come here like once a week, and well, always good to learn something with him and hear the stories, and sometimes traveling together. <laughs> Beleza, tudo bem? Beleza. 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 Tem muito uma... Eu tenho 10, ele tem quase 20, é, imagina. É. Não erra mais em nada. Não, não, exatamente, exatamente, exatamente. Eu, eu, eu... É que eu digo, o cara vai lutar contigo, o cara que passou a faixa preta agora. Ele olha pra você, olha pra pedestal. Você olha pro cara como iniciante, pô. É, então não. começou a... Hoje em dia não, não pode errar em nada. Às vezes um errinho no começo da luta, tu paga no final. É, você até melhor que o cara, mas o vigor físico dos dois é muito bom. E o cara com uma vantagem, é. bicho. Aí tu começa a atacar, errar, se expor, aí uma muda lá. É, agora os últimos eu lutei até melhor. É, né? Sem a pressão. Porque antes era aquele negócio, né? Quebrar recorde e tudo, agora... Isso aí, querido. Adorei te ver, dá um abraço em casa. Oh, muito obrigado, Elcio, mais uma vez. Muito bom te ver aí. Você sabe que aqui é... vai ser sempre não. a tua casa. Porra, não, eu sei. Vou vir, então semana que vem eu venho aí treinar. Vem aí, vem aí. Vou levar eles aí também. Quando eu era 15 anos, eu me senti bem, mas não realmente. Eu gostei, mas não era uma paixão ou algo assim. Eu gostei de ser treinado no meu time na época. They were coming back from the worlds, and I remember they were talking about, oh my God, I got like silver medal, but I would switch every silver medal to be gold because that was my dream to be a world champion. Then I said, oh my God, that was something that made me like think about, oh, that's something cool. I, I wanna, I wanna experience what he's talking about. Something just clicked after that speech and I decided to take Jiu Jitsu serious and then I started training every day. Quando ele resolveu realmente abraçar o esporte, ele demonstrou que é muito dedicado. É, daqui até a academia são 10 km. E ele fazia isso de bicicleta duas vezes ao dia. É com sol ou com chuva. Ele ia de qualquer jeito, não faltava. Então ele mostrava uma dedicação assim, acima da média. 
por dia, 40 km. Ninguém percebe, ninguém vê isso. After that, I start training with a purpose of doing something. Okay, I want to compete. That was the click when I was 15, and then start becoming more natural for me. E aí, rapaziada, como é que tá, Marcelão? E aí, Lucão? Beleza, mestre. E aí, meu filho? Beleza. Tudo bem? Tudo tranquilo. Eu conheci o Bochecha com 14 anos de idade na equipe Integração, no mesmo local onde eu peguei a faixa preta. Ah, no ano de 2005, eu mudei para a equipe Brasa, em São Paulo, para treinar com o Leozinho, com o Léo Vieira. E foi quando o Bochecha veio treinar comigo, ele era juvenil ainda, né? Se tornou meu aluno, faixa azul juvenil, com 17 anos. Um garoto, esse apelido quem deu pra ele fui eu, né? Bochecha. Né? Então, por causa das bochechas dele, o seu Cleito já treinava e ele levou o filho dele lá. Esse aqui é o Marcos e tal. Eu falei, pô, esse moleque é bochechudo, né? No primeiro contato que eu tive. E aí foi a primeira vez que eu vi o Bochecha, eu chamei ele de Bochecha e todo mundo depois começou a chamar de Bochecha. Porque o seu Cleito via a gente viajando para competir, indo para brasileiro, para mundial, e via a gente andando com os nossos amigos do Jiu-Jitsu e ele queria que o Bochecha fizesse parte desse grupo de amizades. Quando nós éramos na integração, ele começou a competir, né, quando garoto, quando mais jovem. E não tinha, assim, não, não conseguíamos ver ainda, assim, esse talento diferenciado, assim, esse algo diferente. Ele era normal. The beginning of my career was with a lot of defeats, a lot of losses. I was crying a lot, I couldn't like hold it. I tried to like not cry in front of my friends, but I was crying. And I said, you know what, that's not for me, so I don't want to do anymore. O ser humano tem mania de julgar as pessoas pelo que ele vê. Só que quando a gente fala que o Bochecha veio lá de baixo, da periferia, com uma grande dificuldade, passou por muitos obstáculos, as pessoas ficam surpreendidas, elas ficam surpresas, né? Porque ninguém imagina. E realmente, a gente vê que quem conhece a história de verdade do Bochecha sabe de onde ele veio, sabe as dificuldades que ele enfrentou. People see me losing, oh, okay, Bochecha lost. It is what it is. My professor at the time, he said, yeah, all right. You can be the weak one and give up, or you can show up Monday in the gym and train harder. It's up to you. So that was really like, even for a 16 years old kid, was like something like strong. Like, I don't want to be the weak one in front of my friends. And everybody knew that I was the quitter. I came back, then I started training, then the feeling faded away a little bit. I was 16 years old. I was about to quit. Then the first tournament that I fought was a in-house tournament. I fought like a guy really older than me and I remember I got like a helicopter sweep and I got sweep, the guy tried to stand up, I went to his back and I choked him and he tapped. So the first tournament that I fought, after that speech, I won. I think that was the most important title that I had as blue belt. The first one was something unforgettable for me. It took me a while for me to know what winning is like. E na época a Bras e a Aliança eram grandes rivais, né? Brasileiro de equipe, se você faz três pontos, você já elimina a outra equipe, né? Então a Aliança fez 2 a 0. Nós conseguimos fazer 2 a 2 na final empatamos. Adivinha quem foi fazer a decisão? Bochecha. That was the, the best feeling of the world because that was the second time that I was winning. O 
Bochecha lutou, fez, ganhou, fez 3x2 e nós vencemos o Campeonato Brasileiro de Equipes. Então, desse momento para frente começou o Bochecha. Of course, I won a lot of titles, this blue belt. But at the time, I didn't have money to come to compete in the awards. Was in California already at the time, and I didn't have money, so I had to fight the the awards in Brazil. I had to do 12 fights in the same day, so it was really hard. I remember I won my division and the open weight. But I didn't have the feeling that I was world champion because it wasn't IBJJF, the most important tournament. Ele era faixa roxa. Ele foi tentar o visto no consulado americano. Pô, foi o visto foi negado. Eu não acredito. Eu não posso ir para os Estados Unidos. Que não sei o quê. E aí eu falei, calma, a gente vai resolver isso. After I had the help with the state federation and I got the visa, I came to the awards and I fought. I won my division and the open weight, so then I said, okay, man, now I'm world champion, so it's something really big. Esse foi a primeira vez, foi o primeiro grande obstáculo, né, que que a gente passou e conseguiu, graças a Deus, colocar o bochecha. E aí ele foi para um mundial, ganhou peso absoluto. <laughs> primeiro ano lá que ele teve nos Estados Unidos. Oh, yeah. Deu certo. Deu certo. <laughs> I remember after I won, what I got was my name and a picture, just like, okay, who won as purple belt was Marcos, and I had like a small picture, and that was it, and I was so happy. Estamos comendo? E aí, Viga? O que diga? Viu? Prazer, tudo bem? Prazer, tudo bem? Foi ainda bem que fala português, é, Ele salvou, né? Salvou. É. <risos> ele falou que no início da carreira dele, que hoje você ajudou ele, você encontrou ele na academia, né? É. Mas ele entrou novinho na academia. Tinha né? 17 anos, né? Eu lembro que a gente voltou. 16 ou 17? 17. 17 já. Então era azul. Azul. O moleque chegou o professor e falou, meu, vai vir um moleque que é bom, só que o moleque mora longe, ele queria um lugar pra almoçar. Mas foi o que eu falei, não era um patrocínio oficial, um mas patrocínio, foi uma ajuda, né? Uma ajuda. Aí ele veio treinar um dia, eu treinava na época, e... aí eu raspei ele uma vez no, naquela, no rodízio. Aí acho que eu fiz mais alguma coisa, eu falei, pô, Cavaco, acho que o moleque não é tão bom não, velho. <risos> aí é isso aí, acabou ficando o irmão, meu amigo. Eu vim aqui todo dia. Você já arrependeu um pouco para ajudar ele? Porque olha o tamanho dele, ele come muito, né? <risos> Tava um preju, nada. Até hoje o preju. Até hoje é. o <risos> So I won Brazilian Nationals, I closed out with Cara de Sapato, and then I won the awards. So like that was my main title as purple belt. And then when I got the brown belt, everything changes because like you can attack knee, you can attack foot. So I said, okay, let's see. In my head, okay, now is the real deal. The first tournament that I fought was the awards but from the other federation, and I lost in the first round. I said, oh my God, I lost this brown belt, I'm stuck. I would struggle a lot because everybody was stronger than me, so I was so afraid of leg locks. Okay, I made a mistake or whatever, the guy was better than me, but fix the mistakes and get back better next time. No time to cry, no time to regret. No começo, when he was young, he didn't have fear of losing. Ele não tinha medo de errar. E assim foi a carreira toda no começo. Aí o Bochecha apareceu para o mundo. Para mim, ele já estava naquele momento, ele já era diferente. Só que muitas pessoas não conheciam. Né? E gradativamente a gente foi mostrando isso para o mundo, preparando ele. Then I said, okay, head up. Then I signed up for the Open. And then I fought the Open with. Then I beat the guy that beat me in the division. So, 
Okay, so then I won the open weight. After that, I fought the Brazilian Nationals. I fought really well. I fought with like a really against tough guys. Brown belt, I remember was the shorter one. I stayed like 10 months as brown belt. Then I remember I fought Leandro Loa in the semifinal. Eu fiquei a primeira vez que eu fiquei sabendo dele foi foi no campeonato de faixa azul paulista de 2007 que eu tava de roxo e de azul. Aí a primeira vez eu não sabia nada dele. Ele falaram, ó, oh, esse moleque é de Santos, lá do Cavaca. Then I beat him and close out with cara de sapato, the open weight and won my division. Era duro cara, já. A gente chegou na final com ele. Aí ele ganhou a final do peso do absoluto, né? Eu falei, caramba, esse cara aí que vai... É duro esse moleque, aí eu tava na roxa. I went to the words, then I beat everyone. Ah! I won, close out the open weight with cara de sapato, then I got the black belt in the podium. It was special for sure. My head was to win the open weight and my division. So wasn't being like cocky or anything, but that was my goal. Like I was always so confident I would win both. And people are, that's uh, too much arrogance, I think. But for me, it wasn't. <laughs> when I got the black belt, then everybody started clapping and yelling, then like, and I remember the black belts were fighting at the time, you know, Roger Gracie were fighting everybody. Then everybody was talking like, oh yeah, next year, next year. Then I look like, oh my God, next year I'll be fighting the, those guys, you know, so something cool. Porra, demorou, eu vou lá, cara. Eu tô precisando ir mesmo. Pô, beleza, parceiro, seu Pô, prazer, Valeu, mano. Aí, Valeu. Eu gosto de vir ao Brasil uma vez por ano, pelo menos. Então eu sempre escolho vir entre o New Year's Eve e o Carnaval. É sempre bom de restar. Você me pergunta algo sobre a competição depois dos Worlds. Minha resposta vai ser sempre a mesma. Eu tô I'm not gonna compete anymore, but after like a good vacation, like reset the mind, I always feel okay, I can, I can do that again. Who you are, you show that in a fight. I'm not scared, I go there, winning or losing, I'm gonna give my best. That's how I see it too, you know what I mean? So I don't care, I'm not afraid to lose, I just go to kill or die and that's my mentality when I go to fight. In the brown belt I had, okay, I had a little bit of the taste that was competing the high level against black belts. And then with the, when they got the black belt, everything changes because no matter how tough you are, doesn't matter how many titles you got, in the lower belts, the black belt, it's another war. First year as a black belt was really hard for me. I faced Rodolfo. That was the one of the few fights that I feel like, okay, I can't beat this guy. Like anything that I can do, he's like better than me. Wow, jumping guard pass. Adolfo takes it, double title. Rodolfo beats everyone. And your winner on mat number one, Rodolfo Vieira. Me and Leandro say that that year Rodolfo was Mike Tyson. And after that, I decided, okay, that's not good for me. I was really, I was doing really good in the other belts, but in the black belt, that when really counts, I lost a lot of other fights. Moved to Florida, then start a new chapter in my career, new chapter in my life. I was living the American dream, 
different than I was thinking that how, how would be, but I was living with my parents my whole life. And then out of nowhere, I was living in another country for like a 20 years old kid. It was hard. E quando eu levei ele para os Estados Unidos, eu ofereci uma outra realidade para ele. Eu coloquei, ele tinha a casa dele, ele tinha o carro dele, ele tinha uma academia muito bonita para dar aula. I had a, a gym, I had like a house, I was like in the right path here in Florida, but I wasn't living my dream. I was living somebody else's dream. I was teaching, but the gym wasn't even mine. I saw Rodolfo killing everyone. I said, you know what? This guy is, he's still an athlete. He doesn't teach. He trains judo, he trains jiu-jitsu. He won by smashing everyone. My dream was to be a world champion. So I decided to go back to Brazil to train my ass off. A gente diz aqui no Brasil que nós muitas vezes nós damos um passo para trás para dar dois para frente depois. Rafael said maybe I saw something that he didn't. That's why I left Florida. From there, everything changed completely. Então eu vejo que foi um aprendizado muito grande para ele, mas esse momento eu vejo que foi um momento que deixou ele bem abalado, deixou ele bem triste. My head was like really messed up. I decided to to fight a few local tournaments that was paying like some money and man I remember I was losing even like small tournaments in Brazil because my head wasn't there. After that I said you know what I'm, I'm done I'm gonna take a while I'm gonna take a break. I didn't want to do anything I didn't want to train I didn't want to hang out I was all day in my room playing video games and that was it. I went to the college and I remember I did the the registration everything uh, international business Between that, some tournaments show up. Like, was a Pan American in Brazil paying like a car brand new as prize money. And the year before, Rodolfo won the car. So I said, you know what? Some fire shows up inside of me again. Calazans in the final was a great fight. It was one of the tough tournaments that I fought as black belt because everybody was going after that car. Vou conversar agora com o Marcos Buchecha lá de Santos, né? Vencedor da categoria absoluta adulto. Tá levando aqui o carro da Suzuki. Mostra o carro aí. Then I won the car. But sadly, I couldn't even fit in the car when I when I saw the size. The truck, like a little truck. So then I saw, oh my God, I thought it was like a different car, but I sold the car, 16,000 reais at the time, so it was good. Pô, claro, quero agradecer aí a academia lá de Santos, todo mundo treinou comigo aí, academia do Cavaca, lá o Cavaca. Agradecer ao Dig Vigarista, do de boa lá, que tá me ajudando aí bastante, me patrocinando, a Coral, e meu pai e minha mãe, né, que também são grandes patrocinadores e... É isso aí. And then I packed my bags, went to straight to to compete in the World No Gi. I won my division and the open weight as black belt. So then I said, Oh, you know what? I'm world champion. It's black belt. Like I said before, I didn't have money to come to compete all the time, to come to the wars to compete, so. But I remember this time, my father asked me, how are you going? Okay, I will pay your ticket, but you go and stay, because you're not happy here. So you just stay like locked in your room and you're not happy, so go after your dream. E eu tinha essa visão, esse sentimento. Aí eu... Basicamente, eu transferi isso para ele, né? Falei, pô, eu não consegui, mas o filho vai conseguir. É, demorou. Ah, boa, valeu, 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 val
Diego. Diego, pô. Eu fazia agir, mas parei na é roxa. É mesmo? Parei na roxa pô. e não fiz mais. Quando você pensa sobre quitting, só puxa um pouco mais. Vai uma vez, algo diferente vai acontecer. Essas são as lições que eu aprendi. Eu não sei onde eu estaria hoje, com todo esse esporte, se eu gostaria de quitar quando eu era 16. Então, o que eu estaria fazendo hoje? Não é a vida que eu tenho, com certeza. É impossível. Eu me pergunto isso a muitos. E na segunda vez, quando eu era 20 anos, eu estaria como no colégio, mas trabalhando com algo que eu não gosto. Se eu nunca colocasse a minha vida nessas condições, eu não teria like, 13 World Titles. I wouldn't be that great in the sport. So, if you don't know how to lose, you don't deserve to win. Right now, we have one of the matches that uh, we've been looking forward to all day. Yeah. We have in, the, in that dark midnight blue gi, Mushesha, uh, Marcus Vinicius of Czech Mat. Cavaca brought him, Palito and Buchecha, and I really noticed him as a, as a very cool kid, like after the training, I felt like he was not a guy that was just about Jiu-Jitsu. And then sometimes you wake up and say, you know what, I'm gonna surf, I'm gonna surf, I'm gonna surf, and you go surf. At the beginning, as a coach, as a black belt, you don't gonna lie, I was, uh, maybe he's not so serious. When I was lost, okay, I don't want to go back home, but I don't have money to stay, so what I'm gonna do? Then Lucas said, okay, man, I'm going to Brazil, I wanna teach my classes in my gym. I leave you with my car and my house. So, so <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I was already, was a two times Pan Am black belt, you know, it's a world no gi champion. So they look, they look up as a me, like, okay, Lucas made it, you know? But I was living with four roommates, you know, but for the guy coming from Brazil, it was a big house. The community gate have jacuzzi and pool, so they're like, oh, Lucas. That was it. Like, that was the beginning of a new life in California, because I came with a thousand dollars in my pocket without any plan. And that was when I really start my American dream. You know what I mean? Because in Florida it was different, but in California it was like, okay, that's it. I don't have who to call, I don't have my parents. I'm on my own here. And then was the hardest part, but the happiest part of my, my career. Senta aí, senta. Senta aí. Senta aí. When you're young, you don't really want to do anything, right? I remember just, I used to like to stay on the beach, on the street. Like doing anything, like playing football and messing around, but not anything serious. Then I start training, but then my friends, all my friends from my neighborhood, start surfing. So, but that was like 13, 12, and and it was fun. Better like with better waves and a sunny day. The beach full of people, but it is a good day. Look at Jiggy, you got a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right now it's summertime in Brazil, so summertime is the worst season for waves here. So winter California is amazing, but it's too cold for me. So I really surf when I go to Hawaii and France. That's when I really surf every day, like three, two times a day. But here in Brazil, like that's the fourth time in almost two months. Gonna help him pass and mount. He's got the cross choke. It could be done. 
It could be over. It, this could be all she wrote. That cross choke is on, and it's a tap. 433. Marcus Vinicius Bouchesha wins the gold medal for Czech Matt. He is impressive. Yes. Unless something derails significantly in, in the world or in his life, we're going to be seeing this guy at this level, I think, for some time. Yeah. His goal was like, I want to win one tournament as a blue belt, right? And then, oh, I want to win local. And then he win local. Oh, I want to win national. I want to win international. And then, oh, I want to be... And then, of course, he wants to be a black belt. And then when the black belt, he wants to win like a world champion. And Rodolfo Vieira was his first fight. I think the big difference was the first time he fought against Rodolfo, he saw Rodolfo as an idol, and he was happy to fight against him, and he was okay with the result. Okay, it's Rodolfo. And the second time, next year, he was... I don't want to lose for that guy. So that's when I said, you know what? Put me and Rodolfo to fight the first round. I don't care. I just want to I just wanna do it. I'm just going to get it done. Bouchesha jumps guard. Rodolfo tried to pass there while he jumped. But we have the most dominant fighter oh, today, oh, oh, oh. right? With that Rodolfo. Sweep. But he's going to get a sweep out yeah. of this. Good sweep. And maybe a guard pass right away here. That's a tie. Oh, oh, nice oh. attack by Rodolfo. Yeah, really nice. Uh -oh. Nice uh -oh. Very nice. Now on paper, right now at this point, Rodolfo has the every advantage. Oh on the knee. Oh, he's got it. That's he's tight. Got it. He's got, he got the points. It's five oh to four God. now. <laughs> but now it's his turn. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh! The scramble! Oh! oh my goodness! He got an immediate two points for that. People in the chat room are saying this is the best match in history. I don't know if it is, but it's close. That's it's close. Very close. That arm is tight. Oh! Oh yeah. no! That's crazy. <laughs> wow. He eliminates the favorite for the entire tournament. Oh, Unbelievable. My <laughs> oh my God. It was like the best fight that I had in my career. Something special. And the words, I was like on fire. After the worst year of my career, everyone who beat me in the year before, I had my revenge in the following year. In 2012, I got so good. My Jiu Jitsu made like poof like this. Huge difference from 2011 to 2012 was he's aggressive, he's mean. He was not a nice guy on the mat anymore. 2012, he coming to kill. Here we go. Here we go. Leo Nogueira versus Bouchesha in the blue gi. Leo Nogueira definitely was like one fight that was my first world title at open weight. I was losing the whole fight. And I look at the clock, it was like 9.45. And I thought, man, I have one shot. I saw like in like a slow motion, his hands coming up to try to grab my gi. When I saw his hands trying to reach me, I went under and got like a double leg. He tried to sweep me, but boom, then I straight to the mouth. It's tied, but Bouchashi no just mounted. it. Wow. That's gotta be an advantage. Oh my god. Oh, he scored an advantage. I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. God! <laughs> Bouchesha wow. delivers again this weekend. <laughs> my first open weight title, so it was something really cool. Then when I got my arm raised, I said, oh my God, that was the best feeling ever. And the fight with Rodolfo in the day before was something incredible in my, my, my life, my career. That was really special. 
tournament for me, for sure. That was impressive. That's amazing. What are they saying, Braulio? They just called him Checkmat. Who is Checkmat? After winning in 2012, Rafael came to me and said, people are gonna say that you won by lucky. I witnessed him winning the World Pro a bunch of times. He, nobody can handle him if he lets really go. Huge, super athletic, incredible technique. Cara de sapato. I train with him here in Florida. So bad to live with him, bro. You're doing good, bro. Keep, <laughs> keep believing. <laughs> You can't spit in my face, but if you spit in Luca's face, I'm gonna fight you. It was kind of like payback. Two buddies going out of here. It's a very special moment, you know. Sometimes it's more than about just winning. Muito grato, mesmo pela situação que eu tava, pelo menos eu tinha um amigo, né? Então se você tem amigo, você tem tudo, né? I try to do a position, and he counted in the same time. Trying to fall over. Oh my goodness! Oh, he's oh, hurt. Oh. He's hurt. I promise myself I'm gonna come back. Like I, I will come back and I will make things different.